Size so coding is just taking a program and just trying to make it as small as possible. You know, it's a lost art these days because systems have so much RAM and so much disk space, but uh, especially back in the day, it was super important. And, um, you know, it's always good not to be wasteful. Size coding is like a puzzle game where you try to make everything fit just right so that it can fit in a very constrained small space. The only real difference to a game is that you have no idea whether a solution actually exists that fits. Size coding is an art of making impression if the least possible number of bytes. And it's, it's about creating a program that will create some visually or uh, auditory pleasing effect that will make some artistic impression. Size coding is creative programming of audiovisual effects and games based on excitement to do the impossible with the help of technical tricks under strict restrictions. I would simply say that it's a kind of hobby for computer geeks who like to create audiovisual effects in such a way that uh, their creations can be expressed in a very minimalist form. And uh, the goal is to create something that others perceive as impressive or seemingly impossible. Size coding is a form of uh, writing software where you set some size limit on the uh, resulting executable, um, which can be very small, like 256 bytes or less. And you try to fit as much uh, of code into it for creating some effects or even music. So when it comes to explaining the demo scene in general to outsiders, I have a well-rehearsed explanation about how it's a collaboration between programmers, graphic artists, musicians who get together to make these standalone artworks that are similar in format to music videos, etc, etc. When it comes to size coding in particular, I think that kind of background is probably less useful and you're better off just showing them Lightcrypt or Pyrite or whatever and saying this is 256 bytes and it's a very binary thing, either they'll get it or they don't. And I think for people who are programmers and have an intuitive understanding of how much work you can do, in X bytes, then hopefully they will get the, they'll get the idea and think it's really cool. And for people who don't have that background, I think you'll have a hard time selling them on size coding no matter what. And you can give them comparisons like this is as much information as there is in a tweet, but I'm not sure how much that will help people to relate to the achievement. And so maybe the, uh, another way of uh, explaining it to those people is to talk about it in terms of taking visual ideas and distilling it down to its mathematical basis. Maybe that's the way to think about it rather than purely in terms of the number crunching. Size coding is about spending the maximum amount of time on the least amount of code possible. Uh, I go with it's a fusion of uh, visual arts and music and coding and minimalism, which takes away the hard part of it because I think people imagine that it's something easy to do, like uh, doing minimal music with some kind of just tones, but with high quality instruments or whatever. But this is uh, the one I would uh, go with because it's easy and it doesn't, uh, you know, shy away potential uh, coders. So it's a fusion of music and visual arts and minimalism and code. So I guess I would tell them, imagine that you have to create the smallest, best looking and best sounding product with your computer with the smallest amount of code size. So I think somebody who should know a little bit about coding or programming maybe can relate to that. Size coding is all about writing a tiny program that displays some animation or plays some music. There's a hard size limit on the code size or on the executable size. Usually when you're a program for a living, there are multiple people involved and there are thousands of lines of code. But in the small size that people are competing in, there are usually not not any place for extra complexity. So the way you work 
and the way you approach a problem is completely different. Programming becomes more creative and minimalistic, and that's what I like about it. Uh, it's like optimizing a route for delivering packages, so you get the maximum number of packages or effects uh, to the people without running out of gas, or in terms of size coding out of space. Size coding is a super hobby. Great fun, very good exercise for your brain. Like a crossword, but more complex. You can do it in your mind, anytime and anywhere by driving a car or you are in church, what else? For me this actually can be anything from watching old demos from the 90s, 80s and just recreate something that is interesting in that respect or you just walk through the city or the forest and got some stupid idea just by nature and try to implement something interesting from that. I'm getting uh, inspiration from a picture which, which can be a picture found somewhere in the internet or it can be a picture from uh, something I saw with my eyes um, and uh, usually um, it's starting with some uh, creative uh, thinking okay I saw this picture what I could do about it but sometimes it starts also with uh, technical discussion I usually take my ideas from outside. I see something interesting, visual effect or technical description, and try to implement it myself, also adding something new, changing, and combine with other effects. Sometimes an idea is born in the head by itself, but unfortunately it doesn't happen often. For me it's mostly about trying something new in, from the graphics side, or a technical side, like uh, what can I do with reflections or uh, can I make particles with Z-buffer look good or there's a new instruction set that I haven't tried yet, what can I speed up with that? I usually cannot work from the end like I have this animation and I need to encode it somehow, I need the end result to be flexible. First, the technical basis and see if that might fit in the size limit, then what you can create with it. Well, it depends. Most of the time I play around with some rough ideas and things evolve, so most of the time there is no real concept in the beginning of a production. Seriously. For real. I've never, like, touched an idea from, from start to finish to have an actual production. It's mostly like freestyling on, on, uh, on parts of code and see what comes from it. Because um, like going from, from, from a plan to a result with code feels a lot like work and um, I produce code at work too. So normally in my free time I want to like let go and not be uh, tied down by a plan. So mostly it's freestyling on on pieces of code I have and combining them and uh, altering them until something comes along. Sometimes I've been working on uh, an effect for a full-size demo and just noticed in passing, oh, this could sort of crunch down into something intro-sized. Other times I've uh, started uh, with the intent of like, recreating something. So in the case of uh, sort of Kasharadon Minor and Starlet Guitarlet, those are two intros where I set out to create, or in one case it was the Baby Shark song, in another case it was the music video to Star Guitar by the Chemical Brothers, and just to recreate those in whatever level of fidelity was possible within the size limit. You take some existing effect or some existing algorithm and try to simplify or modify it to get it into the smaller size categories. And the other one is uh, that you just invent new stuff and try new calculations, new formulas and look what you get out of them. 
So you can, for example, uh, create some graphics, some patterns, some uh, geometric structures, or you can even uh, create sound uh, by using some very simplistic formulas. Uh, just think of a byte beat where you have very small formulas, which sometimes create some very complex uh, output. Often I will get an idea and I'll start working on it, but it almost never turns out the way I planned inside my head. And often it's actually more interesting than I was trying to. So uh, for me, uh, it's a long iterative process, I guess. Most of the time the idea came from the real life. Just noticing things. For example, strange structures, interesting movements, or nice visuals in a concert. For me, most interests are basically just based on a technical idea. I just have some kind of effect or some kind of routine that I want to implement and then I hope to make it fit in the space I have. And then maybe if it doesn't turn out to be quite possible, I try to experiment with variations to make it, well, to make something work still. Mm, I don't think there's like a surefire way to come up with something, because honestly, I almost never ended up with quite the same thing that I originally set out to create, because you kind of have to go where it leads you, right? But usually when I see some painting or some screenshot, I try to think of some generative principle behind it but of course not every idea is simple enough or powerful enough to be implemented but some of them are A statement. Hmm. Well, uh, someone could also code a 4K to avoid working on a demo, so that's weird. That is a good one because I think it's more true than people, like especially these high schoolers, want to admit. We have, as a community, been showing that uh, impressive, amazing stuff is in fact possible in 256 bytes, be it um, procedural graphics, procedural sound, um, rendering, fractals, nice colors, all the combination of, or multi, multiple effects in 256 bytes, and even in 64. So I think it's partially true, and I think it's our um, our task as size coding community to to make people even, even more go wow. That is actually true for me <laughs> because I think those real huge production for demo parties so which real huge demos it requires so much effort time skill people I think nowadays it can't be done by a single person anymore almost and as far as it looks to me because they look so nice <laughs> it would take months and hundreds of hours to complete it and I don't have the time and I lack the skill in really like high level shade or whatever coding. I think the statement is true, but you end up spending pretty much a comparable amount of time anyway. I would say that this statement only makes sense if we consider retro platforms because the workflow is kind of similar. It's just that demos represent a much bigger time investment. But uh, if we consider modern platforms, it's not quite the same thing because especially with how demos focus more on the production side of things and design and execution you just don't do it by tinkering with assembly language so it's like comparing two different disciplines well it's not wrong it's just it involves a different skill set and it also feels too much like my job so i'd rather do something different I think this statement is only half true because it's not so much about not wanting to spend this time and uh, putting this effort into a production, but not being able to because you have family and other uh, obligations where you 
uh, want to spend your time with and just have a little amount left you can put into coding uh, not like being in the 20s and so you have to make a trade-off and size coding is a good uh, way to spend less time and still having some very impressive result nearly but a real demo needs more people more active members with skills which I don't have it's a different thing writing a full-size demo versus size coded uh, I like size coding because the hard limit makes you be more creative when it's open-ended and if you can say take a megabyte cartridge even for something like a old-time system it just expectations is a lot higher just because you have so much more space whereas size coding um, I feel like it's a lot more impressive sometimes I would I wouldn't call it a real demo I would call it a big demo and uh, usually in the case of big demos uh, you have more more people working on it so the uh, time and effort is split among multiple people so that's one thing and second uh, in case of size coding uh, size coding is also very time and effort consuming and uh, I think uh, only people who ever try to do it uh, can appreciate the, the size coding because and how much time can be invested into doing something that tiny. Uh, kind of true. Uh, for me, it's not really want, but more can't. But yeah, sure. I mean, tiny intros do take less time than a full-blown demo. But then who has the time for that today? I don't. Yes, I think that's probably true. And there's nothing wrong with that. I think there's a lot of people who work at their best on these sorts of easily chunked bite-sized projects rather than something that needs masses of collaboration and storyboarding. And I think that's absolutely fine. That's the sort of thing they should work on. After all, we're all doing this as a hobby. Uh, we've all got sort of constraints on our free time. And um, yeah, that's just a way of working that uh, works for a lot of people. And and that's not to downplay the efforts of people who do spend weeks or months polishing one particular tiny intro, which, by the way, is absolutely not me. Each demo genre is different. Perhaps those people are partly right. However, I can answer that the authors or large uh, demos sometimes don't want or don't know how to optimize. So what? It's art. Everyone does what they like and what they know best. No, and yes. Oh yes, especially my older daughter is involved in the details of my products. But when I'm working long on an intro with audio, the whole family knows what I am doing and they say, oh no, this is father stupid music again. Um, family does not, but some friends do. So I share uh, some stuff with them, but uh, outside of the scene, mm, it's always a bit difficult. Actually, I think they kind of understand it, but also especially to my kids, I sometimes show the product and then they can have their own idea what they like on it or dislike. So it's really a good idea to show it to people who have no idea about coding, no about idea about high resolution, low resolution, lo-fi, hi-fi, whatever audio, and then get an opinion about it. Because if even they like it, I think then you can convince almost any audience. I think they try to understand what I do. I show them the work, but it's more or less that they think, I think he loves what he does and this is why we're not and say, yeah, this is great. But actually they think like, oh my God, that's, that's just crazy. Yeah, my family do know about my demo scene stuff. Uh, they regularly stalk me on YouTube and uh, when they, they're texting to say, oh, what are you doing this weekend? I'll say, yeah, I'm at one of my demo scene events. Uh, maybe not size coding specifically, but size coding, it really is only a small part of uh, what I do on the demo scene. Uh, when it comes to my the 
larger scale projects like the live gigs or like the uh, the event that I did with the uh, Museum of History and Science in Oxford where we sort of got spectrums together to play Mahler's symphony. Um, those sorts of things do take over my life to the point that kind of the family has to sort of get involved and uh, they're kind of sort of quite uh, exposed to sort of what I'm uh, working on at that time. So yeah, yeah, it, it does come up a lot. I'm happy that my family understands that I want to do something with computers, which is more on a creative side than just the practical side. And uh, I also uh, have shown them some of my productions and also the live reactions uh, at parties where they were streamed. And I think they liked uh, the both the effect, so the production itself and also uh, the reactions. Not at all. They just know that I like to tinker with computer graphics and uh, that I keep some ancient computers for sentimental reasons and they are just instructed not to touch them and that's all. My family's interests are quite far from computer. I may show them something, but I don't think it really impresses them. I uh, show uh, all my productions to my wife uh, usually and considering that she's not a programmer and uh, she's not that much into uh, into computers uh, her opinion re help, really helps to improve the quality of my intros because well if she doesn't find it uh, impressive anyhow then probably it's not um, good enough for the audience which are not always programmers but we also have their graphicians or musicians and so on so i, I believe such feedback is very 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 valuable i do show them my work i don't think they fully understand it i mean they they do appreciate that sometimes there's a nice effect on screen but they don't really understand what it means to do that in 256 or 128 bytes. Uh, my family knows I spent a lot of time on the Apple II. I showed them. They actually uh, watch some of the demo parties that I have entries in. So yeah, I don't hide it from them. Uh, I don't think they necessarily understand exactly what's going on with the 6502 assembly language, but uh, it's a thing I can share with my family. So last year's Love Byte did bring me around to the idea that the 8 and 16 byte categories weren't totally pointless gimmicks and you can do legitimately interesting stuff at those sizes. Uh, I still half believe that the whole Love Byte project was an elaborate gambit on Super Rogue's part just to get those categories added to DemoZoo. They do look a lot of fun. Only problem is that I am on platforms that don't really work at that small sizes but it's really impressive what can be done there i like it everybody who comes up with more than audiovisual noise and invites congrats um, but i think it's very hard yeah. i wish these categories had been present like years ago when i was active in these categories because nowadays it's difficult for me to come up with new new ideas in these categories because I think I've done a lot of these tiny intros and uh, now to come up with something new is difficult for me. Working on the same task and making it in 8 or in 16 bytes could be a good challenge but the competition for 8 and 16 bytes intros would not be a good idea. They don't have too much enjoyment value in themselves. Actually, not quite sure. I tried 8 byte and 16 byte for Love Byte compos. Um, I took the best looking glitch result that I got, but I don't think you can do too much in there. So, I'm not sure if it's really worth being categories. I think that uh, the restrictions here are so brutal that people are basically forced to come up with uh, unusual exploits or maybe some rendering artifacts. And uh, 
it's a bit like listening to a song which only lasts three seconds, right? So how do we evaluate it? Uh, there has to be a certain level of sophistication. Um, I'm not big fan of those categories because I think with um, so small number of bytes you are very, very limited of what you can do. And uh, of course it depends on the platform, but um, at least on a 6502 processor, um, it's, this number of bytes is very, very limiting. So it's just a few CPU instructions and, uh, and well, in that number of instructions, you have to care more about not crashing it uh, together um, than really making something uh, that will work um, visually or, or as a sound. These are very limited categories. As a rule, this is a single, sometimes creepy, repetitive effect, often a random result of experiments. I don't really like these categories. Sometimes it's just, it just almost looks like random code for some visuals, but of course, I like it that they are there, but I'm not too keen on doing some of those. Well, those tiny categories are very interesting because uh, these are extreme limits uh, for size coding. And it's more like a coding puzzle than putting some dedicated effect into it. I think they're impressive. Uh, Apple II, it's really hard to do anything in under 16 bytes. Uh, you know, it's, it's never going to look as good or compete with what people can do with DOS. Well, it's nice that there are coders who are able to create more than just random noise, but uh, it's not for me personally. I have two favorite stages. The first one is when I'm playing with a prototype and the iteration speed is much higher than later when I dive into assembly. And then the final stage where the intro is finished, but I can see that I can still improve the aesthetics by sparing a byte here and there. Uh, I think I have the most fun when I'm able to optimize the code further and to get the bytes for more improvements here and there. So the production level raises. Yeah, that's what I like. I think it's always the early stage where I have an idea, then implement some code and then I see it can work and still enough room to do what I wanted to do, or even finding that there should be enough space to add whatever in the end. So that's you're really happy that you can go on and not throw everything into the trash can because it's either too slow, not doable, or whatever. I think my favorite stage is when the initial idea for the first time seems to work out. So my favorite stage of production is the one uh from the moment when you, from like proof of concepting, you have something that you think, okay, this is good, this, that's really good, and uh, and now from this moment, uh, even when uh, when the the size of the code is uh, double or triple, and you have to do all those uh, optimizations. Uh, it's something that is really driving you to to achieve the results when you basically have this uh, idea that you think, okay, this is something, this is something cool, and um, this moment when you, when you have it, it's uh, it, it's it's great. I think it's when you already have the core idea in place and you are confident that it works, and you are just tinkering with it, and suddenly something clicks and you get like a snowball effect and uh, you get to combine various side effects uh, in ways that you originally didn't even think about. So that part can be fun. Like the first is like the early phase where you just sketch things out and try, um, try to already um, 
steer towards an approach you know, so you can um, use a lot of your size coding knowledge. So you can steer the idea itself to something like some loops or some constraints, you know, all that can be done in very little space. Second then, like reaching it. Like if you, if you are stuck at 33 bytes and you try it for, for two days or to get to 32 and uh, you reach it, that's a great feeling. And also, um, if you finish a sketch or an idea and you know for certain you did something good. Like there's a sp specific feeling where you are very sure that what you have just done is really great. My favorite uh, development stage of a production is, I think, the gradual uh, improvement where you can take a part of the intro and try to find a um, better way to implement it or just uh, find some optimization for it. For me, definitely the code golfing near the end. When you think you're already done, go to bed, and then in the middle of the night suddenly you have an idea that potentially could help you save a few more bytes. And then when you get up, you try it out and it actually works. That's awesome. Uh, there are parts, I guess, near the end when you're finally getting it to fit and it finally fits is always sort of the best part. My favorite development stage is code golfing toward the end, hunting for the last bites. I don't think there's really any one stage that's the best. As I said, the best part of size coding for me is the surprises, and you never know when those are going to strike. If you did, they wouldn't be surprises. So it can be the, the flash of inspiration right at the end that lets you cross off that last bite, or other times the, the end stage of a production can be the most tedious one where it's just, I have so many bites free and no idea what to do with them. So yeah, it can go any way really. In general, everything is interesting except perhaps catching bugs. So far a whooping 100%, just maybe not to that party I intended it to be released. I think it's very close to 100% actually, because the party is usually the only excuse to do it, because otherwise there's just too many other things going on. I think for size coding projects I'm probably pretty close to 100%, but maybe it depends on what you define as a project. I think to me, I think the window from a bit of code you've been working on qualifying as a fully formed project up to the point where it's developed enough that it would be madness not to finish and release it is a pretty narrow one. Most of my projects are finished for a compo. About 90% of my codes is submitted to a party. I guess it's like 70% almost because I don't know, I don't do so much coding at all. I just if it and if the super early stage wouldn't show any possibility, then I would just skip it. So uh, I wouldn't call it that off that early sometimes, but still I try to finish something. Uh, that's a complicated question. Uh, I don't always submit the parties being in the US. Uh, there aren't always parties available that you know you can attend remotely. So. Um, I do have a lot of things that sometimes just end up things like on the Apple II Twitter bot that never have made it to uh, production yet. Though sometimes I can rework things to be used. Maybe half. Some entries are not finished because they don't have a finished idea, only some single effect. They are waiting when the right time comes. Others have an, an idea, but almost nothing has been done for them. I think maybe 20 to 30 percent made it into some production. Uh, I still have a lot of stuff I did on a three 
86 in the 90s and uh, also some of the current projects are just not in a final stage so I will just continue uh, improving them and optimizing them uh, until it fits <laughs> and it's just about uh, having some complex uh, things flying around and uh, which just also takes more time to finish. Of all the ideas, maybe 10%, 20 have been submitted. But that's mostly because all the other projects, ideas are just not good enough. It's just, you know, some tiny ideas sketched out and mostly they are not they are not good enough to be submitted. So that's why the percentages are low. Uh, I didn't count, but I have this folder with failed projects and um, there are uh, maybe a few dozens of them. Uh, so, so I would say maybe one of five or one or in ten uh, is getting uh, finished and submitted to a party. About one in twenty ideas make it to the pre-production phase, to the prototype stage. About one in five out of these make it to assembly, and about one of four of these make it to the final stage. Uh, since I still try my best to release outside of parties, the answer is already diluted, I think. Um, and not every rough idea that barely runs is meant to be a production anyway. Most of the time things evolve naturally and sometimes I end up with a completely different result than originally planned. And the more you do in the first place, the more bad ideas get scrapped right away before even opening your programs. So I don't know, maybe 2% or 3, something like that. Hopefully it improves. Um, I think just be a lot more moving to fantasy consoles and such. So I think um, we are going to have a few directions. So the first one is going to be related to new platforms because um, there are new operating systems, there are new platforms appearing, uh, either like real, virtual ones and so on. And we might expect that um, the size coding will go there as well. But also we may expect um, some new tricks or new techniques being discovered that may open uh, new uh, new areas of um, of size coding, so I believe we can expect a lot in the future. Interests will embody more and more complex idea, more complex three dimensional effects. I hope there's going to be a significant progress in sound synthesis. Uh, perhaps there will be some progress in compressing to 65 by the interest. Probably there will be some new tools and possible platforms, most likely software rather than hardware. No, there will be more interest for ARM platforms. Mm, this is uh, difficult to predict, of course. Uh, lately we've seen uh, some trends towards more information sharing and towards more cooperation. But as for the nature of the actual works, Mm, I have no idea. Uh, maybe websites like Shader Toy will become more popular because of the accessibility of the platform. I believe it's going to stay a niche corner of the demo scene, but I don't mind it that way. I think uh, there will be some uh, growing interest in, in younger people for size coding because uh, the um, First steps are less complicated than in the past. Uh, maybe, of course, you have to learn assembler for some platforms, but you don't have this for fantasy consoles. So you can um, quickly get into the matter and uh, do something and uh, get some first results. And 
I think this will help uh, growing the user base or the fan base. I actually have not too much a clue about it. I mean, we see that a lot of that Tick80 gains a lot of interest, in, interest as it's also more accessible than maybe this old school assembler hacking. So maybe that's some destination, maybe something else will come up like Tick80. Maybe similar to what used to be like a JavaScript scene coding. Looks similar to me like Tick80. That would be something and then maybe Maybe a lot of tiny intro coders didn't focus on really using those five gigahertz DOS that we still have access to. So maybe somebody can actually make more use of that computing power to show some more outstanding visuals or fractals or whatever. I don't see the feature. Maybe the 500 byte category will get more attention and more hype. Uh, I hope, uh, to the sky and beyond. I think there's a lot of stuff possible, um, especially, for example, for sound, for polishing and advancing on, um, on, on raycasting, for example. Uh, we have seen the intro of Rola um, Seraph, where SSE instructions have been used, which unlocks a lot of um, power from the CPU. Uh, we have seen somehow an Ikubun, the intros with uh, bombastic sound. And we are aware as a community, I think, that we have to improve on, on style, a stylistic narrative and story concepts or whatever. And there is an active Discord with a lot of people exchanging ideas. And we have the Love Bite party, which uh, I think this is shown on. So there's a lot of. Um, development which makes me um, quite optimistic that we will evolve as a scene and a tiny intro size coding scene in the next five years. Uh, I don't even know what I will have for dinner tonight, so <laughs> you want me to know that? 